A very important tool in internet security is the deployment of firewalls. And a firewall will monitor network traffic and filter the data packets coming in or going out based on certain rules. So you might be able to, you might, for example, want to block packets coming from a certain region. So some regions are more prone to be involved in hacking. So uh, East Asia especially is quite prevalent, hacking is quite prevalent there. So you might want to block packets from that region if they've got no need to communicate with you. So the firewall will allow in some traffic and not allow another traffic based on your rules that you've set. You can describe firewalls in terms of being either software or hardware, or in fact both. In the hardware devices, the separate devices, you might have where well, there'll be certain things, certain software running. Um, but even firewalls you have on your operating system, you'll have firewalls in your router, the basic ones. So it's also worth saying that firewalls range from being very simple and free, you can get open source firewalls, to being very expensive. I thought I'd just show you, um, I googled firewalls and on Curry's PC World, you can see some of the range of prices here. So going from £38, this is a Cisco router that's got a built-in firewall, all the way up to another Cisco device which is £35,000 or more than no, £42,000 of tax. And it wouldn't be unheard of to get a firewall system which was £100,000. If it's for a very large business or a very important business where the security is especially important like in defence you know, defence contractors, then firewalls can be very, very expensive. And this will be a very, very sophisticated firewall, a very fast firewall. But the ones in your operating system, the software-based ones, or even ones in your router, are still relatively effective. The high-end firewalls are going to use many, many methods and very complicated methods, very sophisticated methods, maybe even with artificial intelligence, lots of cool techniques. We're going to look at three relatively simple ones which have developed as firewalls have developed. So one of these is packet filtering, and this is looking at the actual packet header. So we're splitting our data up into little packets and it's sent alongside the header. You can ignore the trailer, but the header will contain information like the IP address of the source and the destination, the port number it's going to, the sort of end point in terms of software and also the protocol that this packet is being transported with. So the firewall can look at the header and based on any of these fields either accept or reject the packet. So for example if the IP address is from a hostile country it can be rejected. If it's running a protocol which you wouldn't really expect it to you can reject it. If it's going to a port number which doesn't really make sense you can also reject it. So it's quite useful but um, it's about sort of a metadata to do with the data rather than the data itself. So a second method is state, stateful inspection. It's a slightly more advanced method, slightly more sophisticated, so it was developed later than packet filtering. This is looking at the actual data and especially looking at the actual data of multiple packets. So before we're just looking at a single packet and either accepting it or rejecting it. Here we're looking at slightly more context by looking at multiple packets being received or sent. The implication of this is that the firewall will need some memory and will need um, a better processor to do this. So if we look at an example of where this may come into action, if we have a client requesting a web page, happens, <laughs> you would have done it so many times today already, um, you expect when you when you request a web page from a server by going onto a website, you're expecting a reply. So it may analyze the first packet going out to request it, or multiple packets, and then it will expect a reply. So that will be normal. If it's coming from an unknown source, like a source different to the one we requested the web page from, we can block it, or also if it's going to an unexpected port. HTTP is port 80. If it's not going to port 80, that's slightly suspicious, so you might want to block it in that case. And other examples as well. But we're looking at multiple packets here. Uh, the more advanced firewalls, the very expensive ones we were looking at, um, can actually detect malware. If they'll have a, a database, they'll be able to detect the malware um, actually by looking at the data itself, which is obviously very useful. A kind of separate but very related term is the proxy server, which is an intermediate device between two devices that are communicating. So all the messages between the two devices, here we've got a client and a web server, are going to go via the proxy server. So if a client is requesting a web page from the web server, it will go instead to the proxy server and it will relay the message to the web server. And by relay I mean it will create a new message. It's not just forwarding it like a router would, it's actually creating a new message in its name but asking for the same thing as the client did originally. And proxy means to act as a substitute and that's what it's doing. So on the way back it's taking a message from the web server and then forwarding the contents of that message back to the client. A consequence of this is that all the messages that end up going to the endpoint, the web server in this case, come from the proxy server. So it doesn't, there's no way for the 
endpoint to actually figure out that it originally came from this client. There's no way it's it's hidden behind the proxy server because it's a separate message that's coming out of the server. They have no way of knowing that it originally came from this person. So one way uh, this can be utilized is to be anonymous. There's no way of knowing who this person is. If you encrypt it, your messages to the proxy server, that's perfect. And um, that is uh, anonymous. Also geolocation, so for things like Netflix where it's geolocked, BBC iPlayer you can only use in uh, Britain. So you might want to go via a British proxy server to access UK Netflix or BBC iPlayer. Um, because if the server is located in the UK and it's got a UK IP address, it doesn't. there's no way for the web server to know that in fact you are in France or in Spain. From their perspective, like Netflix perspective, they can crack down on it by knowing or blocking the IP address of a proxy server. If a lot of requests are coming from a very commonly used proxy server, they're just going to blacklist that IP address. So they still don't know. They still don't know for sure that it's coming from a client outside of the country, but they can block the server if it's very commonly used, and they suspect it that it's a proxy server. The owner of a proxy server may just keep trying to change their IP address to try and get around this. The salient point is though that. Any messages that go through the proxy server can be filtered to ensure they're safe to either send or safe to receive. So that links it back to a firewall. And the definitions are a little bit blurred here. Some people will define a firewall as being a proxy server, like a subcategory of a proxy server. That may be true if it's a separate hardware de device. You could also think of it in terms of a proxy server containing a firewall. doesn't really matter, but the concept is that all the messages are getting passed through the proxy server before being received by the device. A firewall doesn't give you, um, you know, the geolocation and the anonymity. A, a proxy server does. So the term is a little bit blurred, but the, the main point is that they can filter out traffic uh, to ensure that it's safe, as can a firewall.